we have quite a treat for you today. We have our subject matter expert Farzana Gassim presenting on Microsoft Word on the web. We're so happy to have her. Farzana, take it away. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. And I know you cannot answer me, so I will take it as you're all doing well. Um, let's get started, right? Because I am always in a hurry always to share with you guys. So um, just like Neda mentioned it to you, um, the workshop is on Microsoft Word on the web. Um, in the past, we used to call it micro, uh, Word Online, right? But now Microsoft is calling it as Microsoft Word on the web. So um, I'm an O10 uh, SME, subject matter expert, just like um, Neda said, but I don't know about expert because technology is always changing and then I can never keep up, but I try my very best to know what is best for us or you know, for our colleagues. So I try my very best to learn that. And I am also an ITTA, Instructional Technology Teacher Advisor. Um, that I work at Evans Community Adult School. It is part of Los Angeles Unified School District. And here is my um, email address. Um, I can guarantee you whether I will respond to you right away or not, but definitely send your questions to O10 and they will um, get to me. So let's get started. You will need to have one of these Microsoft 365 accounts. Um, for example, I work for Evans Community Door School, part of LAUSD. So my email would be fxc9639 at LAUSD.net and you have your own account, right? Um, those of you who don't have it or you're curious, you know, hey, I'm interested in uh, getting this free online and, and online uh, Word or Excel, you can go ahead and sign up um, uh, from Microsoft. Microsoft have so have so many domains, so you can just you know choose whichever one you want at live.com, for example, for Zana Kasim at live.com or outlook.com or hotmail.com. But remember, these are free. Free means um, you will have limited. Uh, uh, storage space with um, district, whatever district you belong to. I am. I, I asked quite a lot of people, and I was I found out that almost. Um, almost all the uh, district employees, not LAUSD only, a lot of districts, you always have at, at least one terabyte. That's quite a lot for us to go through, okay? Right now, you all are not, or some of you are not, or most of you are not equipped with a lot of tools. So the next slide will show you what I will cover. It looks like quite a lot, right? Don't worry, you don't need to memorize any of these things. You don't need to remember any of those things either. I just have them for the fun of it because you are gonna come across with all these labels. We call it, you know, tools because these are exact labels that I um, extracted from the uh, Microsoft Word. So if you look at it, I will cover hidden tiny toolbar, bold, italic, underline. But you all know these bold, italic, and, and underline, right? Because you use them all the time. But there are certain things we use them, but there are certain things we see them, but we never use them. You know, it could happen. If that is the case, you are in the right workshop because we're going to go over that if it is too easy for you. Um, I guarantee you at one, at least one tool, you will learn something out of out of this workshops. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing in office.com. Let's go to sign in. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my account. This computer is my computer and yet I always type the same password because I don't want to forget it and I want to have a habit of knowing my own password. So as you can see, if you go to Microsoft Dismissal, I, if you go to MicrosoftOffice.com, you will have all these things, but we are focusing on Microsoft Word. So I'm going to just stay on Word and I have a document. So in here, as you can see, this document, um, it says Scandinavia, but this document is quite plain with a lot of spellings, mistakes, and images, and all kinds of spaces in between, and all these things, right? So the first thing we would do is that, um, give me one second, I want to see if I can. 
Okay, so like for example, I mentioned the, um, the hidden toolbar, right? The hidden toolbar will only appear when you select a word. So let's select a word. And do you see this little toolbar that appears? That is nothing fancy, but just known as tiny toolbar. So it's that toolbar is the, the, the cool thing about this tiny toolbar is a person like me is too lazy to move my mouse all the way to the top. Instead, I want to do everything in one shot. I can bold, I can ital italicize, I can make it um, underline, I can highlight any color I want, right? All these things in one place. You see how, how lazy I am? I'm not even going way up there. I'm just selecting it and I have all the things I want. Oh, not all the things, but majority of the things that you may need, especially that we use a lot, right? So now I have all these things and I really don't need anymore. So I will just select and I mentioned something called clear formatting. Even though I mentioned in my slides that I will be going over all these tools, but the tools I may go over will be um, not in, in that order, okay? So whatever it's um, a, a, a tool that is so convenient for me, I will show it to you. So since I don't want this anymore, I have two choices. I can either clear formatting or I can undo, 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 right? Because I, I, I did three different types of formatting. So I can either undo or I can clear formatting. There you go. As soon as I click free form clear formatting, I am back to the original except for the highlights. So I can just say no color. So I don't have anything else. So now I'm back to square one. Let's go over Scandinavia again to grow font size. If you do not want to type a very specific size, but Instead, you want to do, you know, just click on the grow font size, it will automatically do it for you in a, a, a bigger size, right? Or if you want to come down to smaller size, back to the original size, which is 12, you're back here. That's called grow and shrink. Here is super script and subscript, you all know that. So this covers the font group that I wanted to talk about. But let's take a look at the line spacing now. If you look at this line spacing, each line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines that we have right now, if I select this, I will have, sorry, if I select this, I will have line spacing of one. What if I want double? As you can see, only the lines are doubled, not paragraphs. Right, so that's why I mentioned line spacing, the difference between line spacing and paragraph spacing. So right now this one is double. And what if I now want to par par do the uh, paragraph spacing? In that case, I need to select every, all these four, I wanna select just to show you enough. So I have one paragraph, second paragraph, and third paragraph in here. I go to layout and as I showed you before, you click on that little paragraph options in here, you can go ahead and change your paragraph spacing into before text. Oh, this is for the indent indentation, but this time you can say spacing of 14 between and if you want before, full point. So this doesn't give you much. I can make it too big. So that way you get to see 30. So now look at this. This space between two paragraphs is increased to 30 point. After this paragraph, there is a 30 point difference in there. So that's the difference between line spacing and pa paragraph spacing. This is line spacing. These, this paragraph, no lines are being uh, uh, you know, spaced out, but the paragraphs are. So that is line spacing and paragraph spacing. Let's go back to home. I like to be on home again, so I, I know what I'm doing. So the next one I wanna show you is, if you look at this Scandinavia, let's say I want to make it into a big title like. So you all are so familiar with this one, right? 
let's just choose this one. It gives you awesome big size, right? But let's say this, I don't want these line spacings to be, to be, um, you know, double size anymore, and I don't want anything. So I can just click on this styles, no spacing. So back, back to this, no spacing mode. All right, or you can have it as normal. So this style allows you to do these styles allow uh, allow you to do any design that you want. Right. So it not only paragraph, but the whole document, if you wish to. So you make sure you select everything and the whole document will be, will be changed to any design you want. Here is the one I want to tell you. There are only 23 shown here, but there are more in there. Apply sub, uh, styles. If you look at all these things, plus who? That's quite a lot, right? So please go crazy with any of those things. Not that I can remember what is what anymore, but it is your call to uh, for you to explore, right? I don't. I, I'm going to stick with this. This is style. This the, this is the you know the style that I chose. Let's now go to indents. The two special indents that I mentioned in my um, in my slides is this first line and hanging indent. Watch this paragraph. If I if I triple click, the whole paragraph will be selected. Instead of starting from here and trying all the way, no. Triple click on any of the paragraph and the whole paragraph will be selected. So three clicks, right? Triple clicks. This time I want to make it first line indent. Watch the word the temperament. Oh, so this is known as a first line indent. Now watch this one. Triple click again to select the whole paragraph. Click here to go to hanging indent. Watch the, the words. Oh, now that is known as hanging indent. This one is known as first line indent. But most of us um, and our students, they should be using this one unless they are doing, you know, I don't know, research papers and some um, formats that they have to specifically use, then they do. This is known as special, these two are known as special indents. Let's take a look at these squiggly lines, right? There is something wrong. It means the red one tells you, the red squiggly line tells you, you have spelling mistake. The blue one tells me I have some two articles in here or I have one. Yeah, I mean, sorry, here, right? So things like that here, I have, I make a, it doesn't fit in here. So Microsoft Word is really getting smarter nowadays. Um, so all I have to do is click, not even right click, just click on it once and it will give you the correct um, the correct spelling. As you can see, I said beautiful and it is beautiful. So you can quickly go ahead and, you know, um, uh, do the spell check by uh, doing that. And now if you feel like that you are like, okay, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what is what. And then if that is the case, you can right click. And if the meaning is already there, for example, let's go to this one first, please. If there is a synonym, it will allow you to have that synonym, but at this time, it doesn't have anything. There are certain times that students type in Spanish words. If that is the case, you might want to do translate, even though I did not cover in my um, slides, but I just wanted your attention to these squiggly lines, things that you can do either to translate or to find a definition of, okay? Now, let me get two bullets and numbers, okay? Let's look down over here. I have Swedish green potatoes recipe. This Swedish green uh, potatoes recipe, but I don't have any type of bullets in here at all, right? Nothing at all. And I, it will be nicer if I have some bullets in here. So you have a choice of, before you type, you, you can, let me, I enter one space. Let's say you are typing and you suddenly feel like, you know what, I'll just put the bullet first before I even start typing the list. So if you want to do that, if you are, if you want to be lazy like me, because I want the computer to do the job and I don't want to move the mouse all the way up here, I would do this. 
If you are taking notes, this is the note taking time. Just press a star key and space. Automatically, it will be given to you, right? So now you can start typing six large potatoes, whatever you want to type, or you already have a list and you don't want to type it any again. All you need to do is select the whole list, everything that you have, select them, press bullets, choose whatever design you want, right? So that is how you can do that. Now let's take a look at this one. Before I go on, I'd like to ask Marjorie or Nida, am I okay? Any questions should I answer? Uh, you're okay. There's one question um, about the first paragraph. Um, one, they want to know how you capitalize that entire first paragraph. Ah, very nice. I did not. I make the computer do the job for me. Remember, I am a very lazy person. I made the computer choose one of these, uh, the styles in here. So somehow I may have chosen one of this one. I can't remember what I chose. I think I may have, let's change it to see. You see, it changes for you, the styles, whatever styles that you did, you see, it change, uh, it changes for you. So this is how I got these, um, uh, this um, caps. I hope I answered that. I think you did, thank you. Okay, so let's get going. So I talked about this bullets, right? Now I wanna talk about the numbers. Let's take a look at this. This is quite a lot of things for me to follow as a, you know, a person who, who never bakes. I can't bake at all, but so what I would like to do is, and I like to look at it clean and neat so I, I can follow it. So the first thing I would do is this. I go to boil potatoes and mash and I press one, but it looks like they're all put together. I don't want that. So I will go to the first there are many ways to do it. My method may not work or um, it may not be the method that you may want, but this is the method that I've been using and I always enjoy it because I always learn something along the way. So that's the reason I'm sharing, right? So now if I go to the second sentence, I press enter only. That's all I need to do and it will automatically uh, uh, type in the, the next letter, for the next number for me. So I just keep going and keep going and then here one more and here one more, right? So now I have all these numbers nicely lined up for me. And this one, for example, doesn't belong in here, but I would rather have this yield eight servings right under the Swedish green potatoes title. All I would do is select it, cut, right click and cut, and I press enter and I can paste. I want to show you, del I deliberately wanted to show you click paste. Microsoft Word prefers that you press control V to paste. So instead of clicking copy and paste, you will actually use the key combination, shortcut key combination, control V. Here it is. Now I have my yield eight servings and I can make it bold. So now I know, and I want this one to be bold as well, but this time I actually wanted us um, maybe, I don't know, 18. Now I know. So this one looks a little bit easier for me to read, but take a look at this bullet and number. I have all of these things together and I don't want them together. If that is the case, I need a space, right? All you need to do is press enter twice. Did you see that? How you, how you separate these two? press enter twice, that's all. So now I mentioned to you about this bullet, bullets and numbering. Next I want to go is this, take a look at this, this line that you see. This line tells you the, the end of the first page, okay? Before we go on, since I am right here between the footer and the header, I hope you guys remember what I showed you. If you see a number, it means it's a footer because it is a footer for this page, but this is a header because this is a, uh, the second page, the header for the second page. So if you click on footer, before we click on footer, let's, let's look at my document. Marvel, Washnock, and Bloomington High School, this area, for me, I would rather have this, all these three, these three lines along with Swedish. So from Swedish all the way to 
Illinois, I want it to be on its own page. So before I go to header and footer, because I will show it to you, I just wanted to point out what footer and what header is, okay? Before, what I, all I want to do is I want Swedish, starting from Swedish all the way to Illinois in its own page. It means I need to do a, something called page break. If I press page break, this Swedish will move down all the way to the second page, watch. This is now a Swedish second page on its own page. Then let me move this a little bit. And now I want Norse Smorgasbord here on its own page as well. So this page, a whole thing from here to here is on its own page. Okay, look at Marvel Washnock Bloomington High School. I want, what if I want it to be closed, not too, too many, you know, not, not too, you know, uh, wide. I want it that way I can just go to line spacing and change it to one. But look at this. If I click one, still it's not doing, right? Here we go. This is what I want your attention to. Just because you try it and it doesn't work doesn't mean it's not there. It's here. Go in there. Look at this. Because of this eight point, this Bloomington High School and Bloomington, Illinois are separated. So if you change it to zero and zero, watch what happens. They are lined up next to each other, right? So that's how you do. And now I can make it right side or left uh, middle because you want to let the person know this whole recipe was created by this person you can have it on the bottom or top i like to have it on the bottom right actually so things like that that you can do with your document okay so i talked to you about page break why don't we talk about table now let's say i want a table over here all I have to do is go to a blank space. The truth to be told, this table options that they give you is nothing. If you only, now watch, please pay attention to this. Someone asked that question a few minutes ago. How can I go from this word online to my desktop? As I told you a few minutes ago, table only gives you very little options. If you want fancy schmancy table, then you go here, open in desktop app. It means desktop version. But I'm not going to go there yet until I get to my a few other things. For now, I'm going to stick here. So the, the person who was asking me about that, it's here. That's where you're going to click on. Now, in our case, I have very simple table. So I will only choose whatever the table that I'm given. Simply you choose it. You have everything in here. Type in whatever you need to type. That's all you have. But at this time, I just wanted to point it out to you. Table in here is very, very simple. But if you want fancier, go to, you need to go to uh, um, desktop version here. As if you are inside that table, you will be given these two contextual menus. These two tabs will only show up when you are inside a table. Keep watching this area, please. I'm gonna get out of a table. It disappears, you see that? It means it's a, like I said, contextual menu. Only it will appear when I am inside, it comes up. So same deal with an image, okay? That's where I want to go next. You are, I talked to you about table. Now I would talk about picture because table design, I have nothing much to say other than you put what you want in your table, right? And then you can go ahead and decide what design that you want and all these styles that they give you, whatever the styles that they give you, you can go ahead and do explore on your own and you can do many things with table design. But remember, you need to be in the table, not outside the table. So next I want to show you is called picture. Let's say, forget about this picture that I have. I would just go to a blank page here, somewhere in here. Oh, before that, in case you want to delete this page break, you don't want it anymore, you have two choices. Go to before the page break and press delete. You see, it disappear. Or go before the Swedish green potatoes and backspace. It goes away. So that's how you can do that. 
page break just by pressing a backspace or delete depends on how where your cursor is but let's talk about a picture i want a picture in here in between let's go to bing I don't have any food picture now uh, that I want to share, but I have Bing. Bing is a search engine like I showed you. So let's go ahead and type something um, uh, buffet. Okay, I've got buffet. My God, I must be thinking about food. I'm fasting. So do you see? I have food. So I click insert and here is an image, right? This image is quite rigid right now because I try to move it. I try to move it. I try to move it. It doesn't allow me to do it. Now watch all these little dots that you have. These things are no. And uh, these things are known as ha uh, handles, right? I don't want to click on it yet because I want to show you, I want your attention up here. It says picture because I select the picture. So you have this picture tab. Now watch if I select outside, that picture tab is no longer here. Again, contextual menu. It only comes with that context, whatever that you're doing. So here is your image, right? You double click. As soon as you double click, you have everything in here. It doesn't matter if you want to click only once, no problem. Go click once and go click picture. You have selections. Oh, nice stuff, right? I go crazy with these things all the time. But this time, I still don't want it. It's too big. It's too much. I have a lot to do. The fastest way to resize something, a picture, is go to the corners not to the this area right not the width and the length but go to the corners you see how you can just drag up and down up means bigger down means smaller play with it with your mouse right this is how i can get a picture now come back to this picture again i want to show you still i cannot move it the way i want it so double click again or you can simply click on picture now i want your attention here wrap text if you click on it, watch, you got four, five options here. Currently, in line with text, this is the in line with text selected. That's why you can now move. This is my favorite one, square left. So it will move, it will stay in left, right? Even then, I still can move it. You see, it's staying, it's, it's, it's movable now. What if I change it to right? It will go to right. What if I go to the, how about this? I move it here, behind text. Oh, it's behind text. What if I want it in front of text? Wow, here is in front of text. But I don't think why you would want to have a in front of text, right? So let's move it down and go to square left or move it to the square right. Nicely done, right? But remember, what I'm showing may or may not work right away. You need to practice these things a little bit, but I want you to take home or, well, since you're already home, so you can take home, but just take out of your computer to your brain is this. Do make use of these options, please make use of these options. What if you want to crop? Go to crop. Click crop. As soon as you click crop, you are given an option to crop whatever part that you don't want. I don't want I don't want anything. All I want is my chicken. I want chicken. That's it. That's all I have. And now I can make it bigger. I have my chicken now. It doesn't look nice, but because I can make it much better than that, I think. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to clear the style because I, I would, it looks like blurry. So I'm going to click clear style. Wow, I am back to my original size or almost original size. And I can still do whatever I want to do with wrap text. And I really hope that you learn that um, at least this tool from me, uh, even if you did not learn the rest or if you don't learn the rest of them, right? So these are images and stuff that you can bring in. If you feel like, you know what, I don't want to go to Bing all the times. I have my own image and everything. Please go go free with your by yourself. Go to picture, go choose your file, whatever files that you have, you are welcome to go put it in. And if you have copied somebody else's picture, just go, right? Click and copy and uh, from any website or whatever, but be mindful of the copyright. And then you can just come back and then paste. So you are easily allowed to copy and paste from, you know, other documents or stuff like that. So 
that's something about picture and being. I mentioned the whole thing on my slides, right? Let's now go back to header and footer. How excited I am about header and footer. Um, Marjorie, am I good? I think you're good. Um, we have one question that it looks like you might be going over next, but I might be wrong. Very good. Um, how do I make columns on a document? Okay. Um, okay. So I do, I, I'm not covering the, uh, I don't think I, yes, I will be covering the columns in here because the truth to be told, I cannot remember seeing column at all. Very good point. And I am very happy because I want to I want your attention here now. Move my, I'm moving my mouse to something called tell me what you want to do because I know about columns on Microsoft Word desktop app, a desktop version. Let's say you want columns, right? So simply go ahead and type it in, in here. If they have it, it will give you. If you look at it, there is nothing on the list. It means, how about that? You see that? If you don't, if they don't have it on Microsoft Word, not, it will not show in here. Instead, it will tell you open in Word. When it say open in Word, it means desktop app. Okay, so now let's take a look at something. If we are, you know, you have a document, something like this type of document, and then we talk about image, but this time I want to talk about layout. The reason I want to talk about layout, oh, wait a minute, before I talk lay, uh, about layout, I was gonna talk about header and footer, right? So let's go back to the front page, the, the first page. It shows you header. If you scroll down, it shows you header, uh, footer, because it's on the bottom, right, footer. The cool thing about this crazy header and footer is you just click on it. It's right there for you. Look at that. On the top, you have three boxes. It tells you, you can write your whatever things, whatever you want, Frizana, Kasim, maybe the name of the essay. I can't spell. Scandinavia, uh, what is it? Today's date maybe, 5-21-2020. And maybe here, the name of the teacher, I'm gonna use Barry Bakin. He will have a good laugh with me later on. And in the middle of this would be, I don't know what to write. I don't know, don't write anything. And then maybe um, just go in here. You can just leave it alone. Or I want your attention here now. Go up again. And in this, you have table design and table layout. But what I might want for this middle one is cell shading. What if I want a little color in between? So now I have this cool looking shading in the middle and it, you know, it, it's kind of neat. I don't know if you might, if you like it or not, but it's, you know, something like that. But once you click outside anywhere, your footer and header will disappear. So if you want to go back, go click on footer. And here it is on the bottom. If you want to uh, go to header, every time you click header and footer, both of these um, will show up. Footer, I mean, header on the top, footer on the bottom. Now, I mentioned something called options that is only available. This will show up on the right side. I don't know if you can see it. On the right side, it says options. This one will only show up if you select either one of header or footer. Now, if I click options, what if you have 26 pages? The first one is a, um, a, a, a a title page and you don't want a page, you know, uh, you don't want a um, page number or things like that, you can have things ready for you. You can go ahead and play with these things. The best thing to do is explore um, just by clicking and checking it out, okay? So make sure you go to options to get these things. And if you don't want a page number, you can just click remove page numbers. Now I would just simply click outside so I don't have to see these options anymore. And I wanna go back to my document. All you have to do is click inside. There you are, right? So this is called, uh, this one is called footer and this one is called header. Let's go to our layout. I mentioned if you are in open desktop app, if you are in desktop version, you can get orientation in many ways, right? I will go over in like, two minutes, okay? Find and replace. There are two ways to do it. Go straight to home here, 
and find and replace. I don't know if you can see my mouse, find and replace. But again, I am very lazy to move my mouse. So I'm gonna just go ahead and type, press control F. F stands for find. If I press control find, look at the left side of the document. It has find underline. Now I can go ahead and find something called I don't know, what should I go and find? Yes, yeah, something called s'more. I think I spelled something wrong, yes. G-A-B-O-A-R-D, I spelled it wrong, right? There are two instances that I spelled it wrong because it tells me result one of two. I want to, so, I want to see what else I click down. So this tells me if I click up, it goes to this one. If I click down, it goes to this one. How about I change it to the next one? S-M-O-R-R-E-B-R-O-A-D. I have two again. There is something, right? They, the Danes, they, they call it smaller board, but I spelled it wrong. So in that case, I can just go up and down to see it. But this time, we're not only finding, we want to replace. So you click on replace here. Or if you just want to go straight to replace, all you have to do is control H. Again, you are back to the same screen, but find is no longer underlined, but the replace is underlined. All you have to do now is search for, what is it I want to search? Let's see, Smoraga board. And replace it with Something like that, right? Even if I'm wrong, just imagine I said it right. And all I have to do is, since I have two, right? So I can either click replace or replace all. This and this will together, this will be, these two will be replaced, watch. Still, I am wrong. So in that case, I just click on it and I click smorgasbord. Uh, so because I had the A in there. Right, so you can do that, or you, if you want to find something called um, fish, you are looking for fish and you want to change it to beef, fish to beef. Right now, I have six instances with the word um, uh, fish. So I, if I want, I can click replace at a time. Click replace, this is now changed to beef. Then the next instance is here, cold fish. I can click fish again, replace again. So the next is gone. You see, keep fix changing it. It keeps changing. Cray fish become cray beef. I really messed up these, uh, uh, these, these words, huh? Let's say I made a mistake with this beef. It should have been fish, not the beef. In that case, you go back to Control H, look for anything with the word beef this time and change it to fish. You can either undo or you can simply just replace them back. All I need to do now is replace all, everything with the fish, everything with the beef will change to fish. That I am sure, I am sure most of you have done control find, control uh, find and replace, but just to point it out to you where it is located and how it can be done, all right? So that's the find and replace. From now on, I am gonna switch from the desktop to the online, all right? So if you are working on something here and you want to go and work in full features in desktop version, desktop mode, you need to click in here. Assuming that you already have Microsoft Office 365 installed, by the way, it's free for you, all the teachers, all the uh, district employees, you should have it all set up. And um, um, so you should have all that, you know, you should all have that uh, desktop version. Not, I'm not talking about Microsoft Word, Windows 10, I mean, Word 10 or, or you know, other stuff. I'm talking about the latest one. It, it gives you free five licenses. So remember my, the name of the document, it's called Sample Document for Word. And I want to open this document in desktop now. So watch, if I click on it, it will tell me open Word. Do you want to open Word here? I will say yes, open Word. Now, if you look at it, I have Microsoft Word 365, I got free. Do you see whatever we did? 
It's right here in my desktop version. How do I know it is a desktop version? Because it tells you here, my account is signed in. Kasim Farzana is signed in here and I have plenty more tools, crazy tools. I've got tons of them, right? That's really cool stuff. So I mentioned about the table. Remember the table I talked about? This table, look at that. It tells you insert table, draw a table. You can actually, if you select, um, uh, for example, hold on, let's go here. If you select all these things and go to table, it can even convert text to table. So I can even say one column or two columns you see that how I split it it can even convert your list into this table of course this may or may not sense depends on what you do right so I don't want it this way all I have to do is control Z so what I'm trying to what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is have if you do it on Microsoft Word on the web you have limited options if you come to if you come to the open in desktop app which is this app, which is known as a desktop version, you've got plenty more to do with this in, uh, table. So you can come and go ahead and check out whatever way you want, right? On my slide, I mentioned something called themes. Let's go to uh, let's go to themes. In order to go to themes, please remember, if you're taking notes, please remember, you have to be in your desktop version. Don't, be, don't limit yourself. There are times that you need to do quick stuff on your document, then use the Microsoft Word on, on the web. If you are using like I need, I have time, I need to make it polished looking document with a newsletter and this and that and that, please make use of this desktop version. They give you free, five licenses. So come down here to the desktop version and go to design. Here is your themes. All the themes that you need will be here. All the things that you need are here, okay? And you don't like any of these themes, come down here too. Go change to any way you want. If I move it, can you see the difference in here? All the things are being moved. So you are welcome to come and play with these, you know, themes. Let me go here. Let me go to something. Please remember the color of this. It's bluish color. I am selecting it now and I'm going to change it to something. You see the colors are being changed. That's called themes. It may not be useful with the documents, but it may be useful if you do a flyer, if you do a, some kind of you know, um, newsletter or some other stuff that you can do. You see the colors are changing because there's nothing, even the, the, the heading is changing. That's the beauty of, of the, having this theme, okay? Remember the color is blue? I'm gonna change it to this color. Now, it is being automatically saved. If you want, please pay, follow my mouse. It's going all the way to the up top. It says save. Why is it automatically saved? Because I am signed in on the right side. Now I want your attention to the top right where my name is, Kasim Farzana. Because I am signed in, you will always have this file saved live online. Okay, so Scandinavia word is changed with the purplish, I don't know what color that is, my maroonish color. Now watch here. Let's go back to my original word on the web. Resume editing here because I finished over there and I want to come back to this. So I am back to Microsoft Word on the web. It's refreshed. Did you see that? How cool is that? I love this. I just changed the color and not color, but the, the, the theme Remember, you cannot use the theme here. You can insert the theme here. You cannot change it here, but you can see it. You can change it here in the desktop version because I know it is a desktop. My name is right on the top. And I know I am in my Word version because I have limited version in here. So whatever I change over there will show up here. 
there is one little glitch I came across. It was not a glitch it, in the past. It was okay. I'm not sure it is my computer or internet or Microsoft itself. That is called watermark. Let's talk about watermark now. When I was testing a few weeks back, it was working, but this time it did not work. The, the cool thing about that, the, the funny thing about it is, is the watermark that I put in here, for example, I'm going to put a custom watermark. Okay. Let's go and find something. I don't know. Cat. I don't know why I'm bringing cat into a Scandinavian uh, recipe list. Oh, well, I'll bring this little one. Insert, right? And now let's take a look at it. I am using a I'm using this. I'm going to change it to maybe 150%. Oh, if you can see, you see this little, this little cat is right there. I make, I turn off the washout. There is nothing much to learn. Just explore it by just clicking, clicking, and then pl play with it. You will see 200% means the, the, um, 200% uh, means, and then you click apply, you will see a bigger eyes. And if you want to make it 100% apply, it will be smaller. And then if you want to make it 50% apply, and it's smaller and smaller and smaller. So as you can see, in my desktop version, you have this little cat, right, as a, as a watermark. Now, it is being saved, so that's good. The bad news, I don't know yet, as of yesterday is this it did not work on my on this version so don't worry don't feel too bad about it because you can always print it from your um from your um desktop version if you were to print or send it out right so if i press refresh button on the top i am basic you know in, in the in the perfect world this little cat should show up Unfortunately, it somehow did not show up. So that I see it as a Microsoft glitch. If those of you can do it, that means excellent that you can do it. But if you cannot do it, that means Microsoft is the problem, not you or not anybody else, right? So that is how I will see it as, okay? So it, I would really, really love it that if you can really go ahead and do that, all right? Um, test it out. That is in terms of watermark. The last the thing I want to show you is called borders, page borders. In, if you are interested in making it into a border, for example, this one, right? This whole thing, I want to have it, select it, go to home, go to home. Remember, you need to be on the desktop version. You go to this something little, uh, the, the, uh, the group called paragraph, and then you go down to borders. You have a choice of putting it into a border, or you, can, you have a choice of going to the border shading and go and choose the design that you want like this, change it to maybe thicker, maybe change the color to pink, click OK. So you will have borders. Of course, this is not too pretty, but I just wanted to show you how it can be done. So that's called borders. How do I know I am online? Many ways, many ways to find out. First of all, it tells you here, open in desktop. That means it better be, not be the desktop version. Second, it tells you, Kasim Farzana, this one tells me on the, on the right. But the fastest way for you to see whether you are on a desktop or online, I mean, sorry, a desktop version or on the web, this little uh, waffle icon. The truth is it's known as App Launcher. That tells you you are in the Microsoft Word on the web. So if you want to switch from one to the other, make sure here is my, 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 my condition. Assuming that you have Microsoft Office 365 downloaded either 2013, 2016, 2019 or Office 365, any of those versions are downloaded if you don't have it downloaded, just simply go to office.com and you go ahead and, why don't I just show it to you, office.com and then you just go to, if those of you who don't have it, you see that when you go to office.com and sign in with your own district account, you will have this install office, download it, follow the instructions from it, and that's it. Once you have it, you will have this word online. And now I want to go to desktop. All you simply have to do is this. Remember that if you're taking picture, take a picture of it. It says open in desktop app. If I click, I will automatically be asked, I will be asked and taken 
to the desktop version. It says open Word. When they say Word, it means desktop, okay? So now I say, yes, go ahead and open Word. Voila, I am in my own Word, uh, Word desktop version. How do I know I am on the Word desktop? On the left, again, do you see my little waffle icon? No, if you don't see it, this means I am on my desktop. And you want to be able to have the latest version, whatever that you're working on from the desktop should be, you know, reflected on your desk, on your online version. Make sure, again, here is another condition. Make sure you go and sign in with, cost, uh, I mean, with your account. As you can see on the top, I have it. If I have this signed in, it will always be saved. I don't even have to click on save button. I don't even have to do anything. Simply do your thing and you come back. Let me just put my name, for example, Farzana Kasim out of nowhere, right? I just wanted to have it. No problem. I have it here. I'm going to make it bigger, make grow it a little bit, put it in the center just to prove to you that you can see it, right? So this is in the middle right after the first paragraph. I'm finished with it. I don't care. All I need to do is simply close it. Seriously, close it. I'm assuming your internet is working well, okay? <laughs> Click close it and now go back to your, oops, go back to your online because you, you are working with two different screen, right? So you can go back as soon as you are, if it is open for you, if it is already open, like this document is already open because I'm working on it, it will show you this window. It says resume editing here. You say, yes, go click on it. And now look for Farzana Kasim. Did you see that? I just typed it with you guys in front of you, right? So it just shows up here. That's it. Now, two last thing I need to show it to you, even though the whole word document is not that, you know, too, uh, nothing in there, there's nothing. I just wanted to have these little things for you. The last two points I need to show before I end is called save us. Then you're gonna ask me, Farzana, you told me you don't need to save. Why are you talking about save us? Yes, we need to talk about save us because I don't want people to go and mess up my stuff, right? I don't want people to clean up and change and do stuff and all these things. Yeah, there are many ways to do that, but I still don't want them to do it. So due to that reason, I'm going to go and click on the arrow, the, the file arrow, and you will see save us. Here's my little assistant pointing it to you, save us, and we're going to go over this now. So how do we go? We go to the Microsoft Word on the web, which is the web version. Go to file, just like my little assistant showed you. Click on save us. Then you will be given all these options. I mentioned it to you, you feel like, hey, you know what? My internet is not that great and I need to have it and I have a lot more to clean up. I need a lot of, a lot of stuff that I need to do with this and you don't want to mess it up. In that case, you download a copy to your computer, click on it. It's gonna ask you, your document is ready. At this time, I don't need it, so I'm going to just click close, but I'll go back here. So if I click on save as, this downloaded copy will be Microsoft Word. But if I save as PDF, then it will be downloaded. It is not saving, but it is downloading. So you need to click on download, and then you need to go and find. As you can see, I, there is a little file there. So it will always be the file that you downloaded will always be sitting and waiting for you in downloads folder. If you go to the Explorer, you will find it un under downloads folder. That's it, okay? So now, one last thing, as I mentioned it to you, save us, all these things that you can do. These two are my most favorite ones. The last thing I wanted to tell you is this, transform. We talked about transform a few minutes ago, right? Because I've been wanting to show it to you. Look at my document. It is not the most fancy one, but I have, you know, little stuff. After that, I can clean up and do whatever I want. This is just a first draft. I wanted to show it to you. So I'm going to go to file and click transform. Please, let's read it together. Transform. 
your document into an interactive, easy to share web page that looks great on any device. Web page, right? It says web page. I will not cover Microsoft Sway, but I want to show it to you. You have many options to choose from. How cool is that? I can I can go crazy with all these things all the time. My favorite one is bouquet, this one, or the last one is this one, reflection. I like the reflection one too. So I look so this looks gloomy, but I still like it. So let's say I'm going to show it to you. You see this? This means how it will look. Your web page will look like this. Your document, actually, your Microsoft Word document will look like a website on this, on a laptop or desktop. And this one means it will, how it will look like on a tablet or a cell phone or something. Let's click transform. Here is coming. Don't worry about it. That is transform page. It's a, its own page and your document is still untouched. So it is a different one. Look at that Scandinavia. Look at it, all the things that I have, all the things, my name in here. You see, all the little cool stuff. The image is not in here, so I have to figure it out what happens. All the stuff that I have, nice. All these images are not showing up yet because I need to add them later on. So the question is, hey, Farzana, I need to edit. I need to edit. Here it is. It says there, edit button. And you do whatever you need to do. Add your pictures, all the pictures that you need. All these things are there. You move things around. But remember, this is called Microsoft Sway, which I am not covering. The only reason I'm covering is because of Microsoft Word. It has a feature called transform. So that is why I covered it. Other than that, I wouldn't have covered it at all. And the last thing I want to show you is this. Can you all see this one? In the beginning, I hope you did not have much, many things in your, um, uh, in, on you or my little 3D figure. But at the end of this workshop, I am hoping that you have tools, that these tools that you need to accessorize yourself or to format, to put makeup, you know, on your do document because I'm a girl. So I like all these makeup stuff. So I see formatting as my makeup corner where I put you know, stuff. And I do thank you all for your time and thank you very, very much. And that ends my workshop. If you have any questions, do let me know. Um, one of the most asked questions, if you could talk about um, what the benefits are um, between the desktop version and the online version. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. What are the pros and cons of each? Okay, so the benefits of Microsoft, uh, sorry, the desktop version is think of it yourself. You are given the whole toolbox, full of toolbox. You will need everything that you will need that is Microsoft is offering. It's all in there for you. That's the good thing. The bad thing about that is most of our computers, I don't know about your computer, most of the computers, some of our teachers have, their computers are very old. So for them to go through this installation, downloading the desktop version and all these things, it's a little bit difficult and they, 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 they lose interest. But that should not because the district, your district is giving you free, free Microsoft, uh, you know, five licenses. So why not make use of it and download it? And I showed you how, you how you can download it. So that's one thing you can do. But the disadvantage of Microsoft Word on the web or online is this. You don't have a lot of tools. And, and then and if you, the point of online means not that you're going to be looking at your, your desk, your cell phone and your tablet, and you're going to work on it only on that, right? It is on the go, on the fly. You are doing it something because you forgot to put a signature. You forgot to put a, uh, you, you use the wrong word or you use a, a, a bad grammar, whatever it is. Because of that reason, you have that online version to do it on the fly while you are doing it, you know, while you are going somewhere or while you have it right there. That is good for Microsoft Word Online. But if you're going to do heavy duty data tables and the graphics and, and, and you know, fancy stuff, definitely use Microsoft Word desktop version and it is free of charge to you. Make use of your, your account that you have. And that's why that's the answer I can give you. Farzana, again, thank you so much.